Hello and welcome to Creativity TV. On today's show, we are joined by Becky James. Hi, Becky. Hi, Emma. Um, now, this looks really interesting, what you're going to show us today. So, it's a bird it's a, cage. Yes, it's a bird cage, but I've made it into a Christmas hanging decoration. Oh, this looks really beautiful. So, what we're going to do, first of all, is to actually die cut, um, die cut the, the bird cage itself. It's the same as normal die cutting, um, it's wafer thin die, so you're going to use your tab two on your big shot. Right. And I'm using um, mirror board here, gold mirror board for this. So all I'm going to do, make my sandwich with my card and my die. So you put your die on top of your card. Yeah. And then the plate. And okay. then the plate and run it through. I tend to put my die on top of my card because then I can see where it's sat yeah. on the card when I'm running it through. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of embossed detail and I'm using, this is the um, secret garden embossing folder. This is my favourite I one. think, it's so beautiful. It is and it's got so many uses this one has. I think, I think the detail on this one is beautiful and all I'm going to do is I just pop my... Pop it inside. Inside yeah. and it, apart from this little bit here which I'm not, you know, you're not going to see that later on in the design. The whole of this is covered because this is a 5 by 7 inch embossing folder. So we're just going to run that through. So you well. use tab one for this. You use tab one for this with the embossing folder. And again, just your normal sandwich, a plate, then your embossing folder with your card in, and then the second plate. And again, you just run it through. So if I just take that out there, and then you can see all wow. that lovely detail on it. Yeah. It really, it just takes it from being a normal piece of cut card to something a little bit extra special. Yeah. Right, we'll just put our plates and add die to one side and just to finish this off I'm just going to give it a bit again a little bit more of the vintage feel and just take a nail file. See I, I see um, Katie Godbeard doing this quite a lot in projects for the magazine and uh, she's done it in the past with Creativity TV mm. as well and um, always looks so good. So the next thing that we're going to do is now that that's finished is we're going to just attach it. I've got a piece of acetate here. Right. And we're going to attach one side and then the other side back to back it. Right. Okay. And I'm not going to. I'm not using my die for this because if I use the die, it's going to cut out the centre bits, and I want those yeah. bits to be nice and solid. Yeah. So I'm just going to get a bit of scrap paper. Just pop that in there for a second, and I'm going to put some glue dots on. Glue dots. Um, as we've talked about before, they are perfect for these intricate shapes because they go right to the edge. Now then, um, as you can see, it's back to back. Yeah. So, um, and I've, I've laid them up so that they're per they match each other up perfectly. And all I'm going to do now is just cut it out. And to be honest with you, it's not a difficult shape. So it's not going to take you that long to cut them out. And you just need... These little X cut scissors um, are perfect because they have the serrated edge which goes look beautifully through the, the acetate. And it won't take you that long to just trim around it. So having done that, you can see the acetate comes away and I've got this nice solid um, feel to it. So I've already done one of those actually, which is here, which is the basic design for my for my um, wow. bird cage, and I've also already added some of the embellishments that I'm going to use later on, and because I want this word home to show off the home for Christmas ribbons, yeah. I've actually placed that there specifically and just added a few of the little pearls as well. So now what I'm going to do is to show you um, a couple of the different embellishments that we're going to put onto here. The first one I'm using home for Christmas um, papers. And what I've done here is I've cut two circles, and this is the middle circle out of the X cut nesting dies. Right. Um, and the reason I've cut two is I'm going to back them, put them on back to back, so that when we make this flower, we actually have its patterns oh, so all the way, the way around, throughout. Yeah. 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 So um, I'll just get my scrap paper again, and again, I'll just use the glue dots. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut round in a spiral. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, don't feel that, you know, it's everything going round. It's got to be in the perfect spiral. Just cut away and keep going. Right, now then, as you can see, you end up with like one of those little springy spirals. And what I'm going to do is just on this centre bit here, 
I'm going to put a glue dot on there to start off with because I just find it easier to it have the glue so there. It's so much easier doing it that way. Ready and waiting to go. Yeah. But I'm going to leave the, because obviously whilst I'm working, I don't want to end up getting it all stuck to me. So I'm going to leave That's the exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave the little plastic covering on there. What you start doing is you start from the tip and just curling and you can do it quite tightly. But as you're you're twisting it, you're actually twisting it round the spiral so you don't move, you don't sort of move your way up the paper, it's actually just following just the spiral. Just following, yeah. Yeah. And you just keep going and keep going. So, right, now we've got to the end, I've taken off that coating and all you do is you stick and push down that centre bit into the glue. So it holds it all together. It holds it all together, yeah. And you can, if you want to, you can let them out a little bit more. So you can sort of let it unwind a little bit and you'll get a fuller flower that way. And what's quite nice as well, you can add a bit of glitter, can't you? Absolutely, around yes. it. Just get your, uh, your glitter glue, glue and just add a bit of glitter around indeed, the edges. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So you've got a lovely little rosebud there. And then, because this is a vintage design, what I've got is some of the Artiste dye ink in the chocolate brown, which is just lovely for distressing everything. I, th I only use this one for distressing, this particular ink pad. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it is a really beautiful soft brown. I mean, yeah. you can build it up, but all you need to do, just get your ink into there and you've got a lovely, just a very simple but lovely vintage flower. Brilliant. So that's one of the flowers we're going to actually put on our design. The other one um, uses tissue paper, and this is Craft Planet tissue paper. And I've chosen um, a really festive red colour here. So we're going to use the scallop circle die for this. And basically, you just need to um, open them up because when it cuts them, it does sort of, it's almost Stick like it seals them, them together. together yeah. yeah. So we're just going to do that. So let's pop them together in. Um, all together in the centre like that. Now you can either scrunch them up if you want to straight away or I quite just like to leave them as they are whilst I put a brad in the centre. And when I'm putting a brad in what I tend to do is use my craft knife and my piercing mat just to make a little cross. Yeah. Because I find a little cross the, the stems of the brad will go through easier than just a little hole. Yeah, okay. Know. And all we're going to do basically is you just scrumple all the layers up. Just pull them in towards the centre. And then if I just open up, um, so wow. you can see the brad in the centre, I mean it's so quick. That's a nice easy flower, so, I've never done that before. That's really easy. Yeah. But what you'll find is once that's on your project as well, you'll mess about with it to get it so it looks just the yeah. right, right for your project. Yeah. So that's um, the two flowers that we're going to use. Now what I've also pulled together here is, and I'll explain this on the finished project, but just a selection of the other embellishments I've used on the design. So we've got some Home for Christmas twine and um, Baker's twine, very, very fashionable at the moment. Yeah. I've got some as well here, some die cut leaves from the X-cut nesting yeah. dies. Love those. And this is a little glitterment that I've distressed yep. and um, just put on the green to match everything that looks else. That's fantastic. And if we just look at the finished product, project, you can see all the, the little pearl, pearl swirls as well. Um, and as I say, you the thing to do before you stick it down is to actually place it out yeah. and then decide where you like it. And the idea with this is it all flows from one side to the other. Yeah, and it's, it's like it's framed it, hasn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But if you Brilliant. if you go from one side and along, it's never gonna seem like it's too much. Whereas yeah. if you went all the way around, it would feel yeah. a bit overpowering. Yeah. Thank you so much, Becky. This is absolutely wonderful. Now, if you fancy having a go at making this, you can actually access the step-by-steps right here in the Creativity Club. And if you do have a go at making it, please drop me an email at t TV at docrafts.com. Now, I hope you've had lots of fun with this episode and I can't wait to see your version of the birdcage. And for now, happy crafting.